truly a royal feast worthy of the taste of the charming Herodias. <laughs> what? Did I say something funny? Oh, no. I'm laughing at the wretched Pilate. Herod was celebrating his illegitimate marriage to Herodias, a woman who was, according to law, his brother's wife. In order to seduce the half-wit king of Galilee, she had her daughter Salome dance before Herod and ask him for a reward. That reward was John's blood. artist of great charm and seduction. My lord, what reward will you give? Whatever it is that she asks. <laughs> Your daughter can have anything she would like, a performance worthy of any reward. Even half my territory. Help her to choose a reward, Herodias. Open up. The Queen wishes to enter. that you would take Herod down into the depths of hell. Repent. You still have time. Repent. Repent. Ah, oh, John, all those people. What do they see in you that is so mesmerizing? Your problem is not me. Your problem is the people. So be aware that the people will gather once again. 
around another. You'll see. You know I'll just punish him as well. I neither lie, nor have I been lied to. You can never kill the last prophet of the children of Israel. This is the will of God the Almighty. He shall live until the end of time. I am the last prophet of the children of Israel to be slaughtered. Believe my words, Herodias. Well, John, I've heard enough of your rubbish. Who do you think you are? Me. I am no one. Nothing. It is for God to decide my status and dignity, and not for you. God? Your God? How could you possibly know what he wills? What could he have said about someone like you? I know your mind is sealed to the words of God Almighty. Mine is not. These are God's words. Peace be unto John. On the day of his birth, on the day that he dies, and on the day that he is resurrected. Finish it. I've heard enough. O son of David, my mission has come to an end. Return to Judea! Silence! Kill him! See, Koza? Nobody ever listens to me. My court has become like my country. Everyone does whatever he likes, you see? Herodias has spread her trap for my kingdom. You understand, Koza? Fighting against prophets is a, a mistake. You understand? I'm not nor ever was a pious man, but I do know who must be killed. At least I know this. I took Herodias from my brother unjustly. I want you to do something for me. Free him tonight, all right? Calm down, my lord. Who are you going to free, Koza? My lady Herodias. His Majesty asked me to free some inmates. Who does he want you to free? John, my lady. He has been released. 
Don't interfere. My lady. Koza, I had a strange dream. I dreamt of Jesus. The wandering preacher. Yes. He was saying, God shall kill so many from the children of Israel until the blood of my cousin John stops boiling. What is boiling of blood? Why do I have such nightmares? More nightmares! It is, it is an ominous night! Tell me, what am I to do, Koza? It is only a nightmare, my lord. Do not worry yourself. Its remedy is to have some rest. And to have some good wine. Take some rest, Your Majesty. All will be well. Your Majesty, I have a trophy for you. What am I to do with John's head and his blood? No! 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 <laughs> Cowardly King, you can sleep well from now on. God's voice has been ceased. See? The spell is broken. Enough said of the cruelty of this world. To have John's head presented to a prostitute as a trophy. It's late now. And you haven't eaten. Have something, and then let's get some rest. God willing, when the dawn comes, we'll set out. Where to? Where Master leads. Good night, Judas. Good night, Andrew. Look at him! The former wolf of Judea has now become a devoted apostle of the son of Mary. How did he manage to get in with the Nazarene's men? Iscariot is ambitious and greedy. I saw him picking the pocket of a Roman soldier. And if I hadn't warned him, he would have been captured, and instead of being in the circle of Jesus, he would have been chasing rats in the dungeons of Pilate's fortress. Iscariot is smart. There's a reason he ended up in the Nazarene's inner circle. I think we have underestimated the Nazarene. The situation is far more serious than we thought it was. He's right. You see, Barabbas, the entourage of the Nazarene is becoming larger than the whole of the king's court. <laughs> we should find out what Iscariot wants. We need to know what he does in the group of the Nazarene. What I heard is this. A stranger called Judas keeps their books. They've appointed Iscariot to help them buy things. Well, I promise you that that crook pockets half of the arms the Nazarene receives. I know what he is like, and he was not straight with us. Tell him to come over here. I think that perhaps the time has come 
for he and I to talk. Go on, drag him over. All right. Go, let's go. I don't know about you, Excellency Kaifus, but I feel exhilarated every time we enter the treasury. Please, Excellency. Even the reappearance of a hundred messiahs could make my heart as gleeful as viewing so much gold. All in one place. I think the magnificence of this gold overpowers all the swordsmen in the legionnaires of Caesar's army. Greetings to the God-fearing shepherd of Moses' lineage, Excellency Caiaphas. It seems you have grown somewhat larger since last we met, Mr. Treasurer. Having a good time? Tell me, what does the religious law say about a pot-bellied servant? Please, do not make jokes. Besides, I want you to tell me, how did the minting of the coins of the temple go this month? As usual, we slivered off the silver content and added a tiny bit of copper, Your Excellency. Would you like to see it? Would you like to visit the mint? Or perhaps you would prefer to stay here in the bullion room? Since we have begun, we'll continue with the treasury. From the thirty bullion rooms we had, only a few remain full. Fill the rest. You know how to do it. Certainly. Excellency Caiaphas, in the not-too-distant future, we may lose even the little gold we have. All of it. Your predictions always amaze me, Excellency Reuben. Nothing is in its place, Your Eminence. Since the day people started following that carpenter boy, the temple's revenue has decreased considerably. People are donating less. Their arms are decreasing day by day, and they denounce the luxurious life of the region's authorities all the time. Instead of looking upon the holy priesthood, they look at the miracles of Jesus. Also, people are spending fewer coins these days. Consequently, money changes, but fewer coins from us. That I realize very well. The market's gone slack. We all know Jesus continually talks about the destruction of the temple in his preaches. And people have believed it. What do you say, Reuben? The temple with no gold. A temple that does not contain the Ark of the Covenant. A temple that receives no arms. What do you expect from it? Do not worry. The Nazarene said, no stone shall stand upon another stone. He didn't say, no bullion shall stand on other bullion. <laughs> Isaac! Uh, sorry. Fine. Now we stand among this huge treasure. But I worry. about our children not even seeing the dust settle on any of this. The way we are going, we will be wandering the world after Jesus. Excellency Reuben, the son of Mary seems to have deceived you as well. What do you say, Reuben? I say that people believe in him. What about you? Me. No. You said that you're worried about the gibberish of a false prophet who says the great temple of Jews will be destroyed? Or are you worried about all of this fine treasure, all this gold and jewelry? 
Both. The Romans are our powerful allies. As long as we provide them with profit, they will surely look after us. The Romans should never be trusted. We must only play with them. They would not think twice about destroying the temple. I fear the curse of the Nazarene. In our journeys with the son of Mary, in Palestine, we pass through most of Galilee and Judea. The only place none of us wanted to visit was Samaria, a forsaken city neighboring Galilee in the north and Judea in the south, whose people were strangers to our religion and they had anti-Semitic tendencies. That day, being lost in the desert, we arrived in Samaria, thirsty and hungry, hoping to find a well or a spring, we dispersed in pairs. I was to accompany the prophet of Galilee. Who do you think they are? I do not know. They're strangers. They don't look familiar. Are they Hebrews? I don't know, but they're not from around here. Jewish. Pay no attention. A woman. Give me water. To which tribe do you belong? I am a servant of God. As am I. I ask what tribe you belong to. I am a Hebrew. But I am Samaritan. A woman. If you knew who asked you for water, then you would have asked him instead. How would you give me water with no bucket to trawl the water, no rope to pull it up? It is not possible. O oh, woman, he who drinks from this well will again have thirst. Yet he who drinks of the water I give will never again have thirst, and they will have eternal life. I ask nothing of you. Perhaps I shall call my husband, so that you can give him water, as you say. You have no husband. You have had five husbands, and all have passed away. And he whom you now have is not your husband. You... You... You're the Messiah? If not, you are a prophet. A Hebrew prophet. I am correct, am I not? Wait. I implore you. I know that you know my question already, yet I'm going to ask it. I beg you to tell me, 
Are you Hebrews, right? Or are we Samaritans? The Hebrews make prayer in the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. And they say that there and nowhere else, men find the grace of God. Our people are taught to worship on these mountains and that only on them should worship be made. Who are the true worshippers? Woe to you, Judea! Woe to the temple of the Lord! Given over wholly to the world's pleasures and gains, as though there were no God. For on the day of judgment, this woman shall condemn you to hell, for she seeks to learn how to find grace and mercy before God. O oh, woman, what you say is right. You Samaritans worship that which you know not. And the people of the Hebrew faith worship that which we know. I say, God is spirit and truth. In spirit and truth he must be worshipped. And one day he will come. And when he comes, God will give his mercy in another city. And then in every place it will be possible to worship him in truth. Truly? Yes. You speak of the final prophet. I am awaiting him. Will he come? Is he coming? O oh, woman, do you not believe that he will come? I do. I do. So far as I see, you are faithful. Know, therefore, in the faith of the last prophet shall be saved every one. The master and a Samaritan woman? Perhaps the prophet you speak of is you, is it? It is? Listen. I am sent as a prophet for the salvation of the children of Israel. And then soon after me shall come he. Sent of God to all the world. He for whom God has made the world shall appear shortly.
Oh Lord, what is this? For I have chosen twelve, and one of them is a devil. Master. Barnabas. Say what you wish to. Master, I feel that you are forlorn. Lucky are the forlorn, for it is a blessing. And you are surrounded by conspiracy. People have lost their faith in Moses and his teachings. Even in Jerusalem, I saw nobody more forlorn than you. Jerusalem has become the center of heresy and superstition. And you are the only one who can terminate this corruption. Master, we your apostles are ready for whatever you will, whatsoever it may be. Barnabas, verily yea, on the day of judgment, you shall sit beside me, giving testimony against the twelve tribes of Israel, all but one of you. Verily I say unto you, that you shall soon be sifted, and that the devil shall be exposed. Barnabas, there shall soon be a great fight amongst the children of Israel, over me. What fight? Jerusalem shall soon swell with chaos and riot. Riot? There are devils amongst the children of Israel that shall start the conspiracy that I am more exalted than a human. But how? They shall misunderstand my miracles to the extent that they will call me the Son of God. You shall see this soon enough. The Son of God? But that's absolute polytheism, according to Moses' teachings. Yes, that is so. My only consolation is the coming of a prophet who shall remove all misunderstandings about me. When will he come to this world? When there are no more than 30 believers on the earth. But Pontius... It's been a fortnight since I completed the petition and gave it to Rufus. So? I wondered what you had decided about the Hebrew woman's imprisoned relatives. Mm. Unfortunately, the petition came a little late. Have you forgotten, Pontius? Have you forgotten the promise you made to me? What have I ever asked of you, except leniency for those few? And you promised you would think about it. Is this the result of your thinking? How many times must I explain? I am a servant to the Caesar of Rome. I am not a king. The Roman Emperor orders the punishment of rebels, and I must comply. But you are also human. It was wrong. You should have listened to your conscience. You can do that much, Pontius. I listened to my conscience once in Germania, and I paid dearly for it. Isn't that enough? I think it was worth it, 
Refusing to slaughter 40 German hostages was honorable. Innocent men and women. Honorable indeed, but in the end, useless for both them and me. Caesar and the Senate promoted their killer. Vitellius killed them when I refused. So while he was promoted, I was demoted and sent to this hell of a place. And in addition, I owe a debt for my survival and my mission here to my benefactor, Sejanus. I'm proud of your honor and your pride. I'm proud to be the wife of such a man. I'm tired and very busy. Try to understand. I have to go now. Good night, Claudia. I will see you in the morning. Good night, General.